Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast, this time about JavaScript functions. I really want to break this down because JavaScript is a functional programming language. Functions form the building blocks of the entire JavaScript language and are essential to understand in order to become proficient with JavaScript. So let's start with why. Why do we use functions in JavaScript? Well, function names allow us to name and document statements. Instead of having individual statements floating in our scripts, we can document and name them using function names. So they serve as a source of documentation. When we surround our statements with functions, not only do we document those statements, it also allows us to reuse the statements by re-executing or rerunning the function. And finally, functions help protect statements from executing immediately. To demonstrate those three points, I've created this short web page in Notepad++, and I've rendered it over here in Chrome. And we're going to talk about why do we use functions in the first place. And notice that this why do we use functions, this element here, this h2, is ID'd y. We'll use that in our JavaScript below. If I scroll down right before the closing body tag, I've added an embedded script. And in that embedded script, I've got two lines of JavaScript, both which are currently commented out. So let's remove the comment characters and read these statements. Document dot get element by id y. That's this element. I'm going to change its style property, and that style property returns an object that has many more properties, one of which is font size. I'm going to assign it to 3ms. And then the second statement, I'm going to assign its color property of the style object to 00, which is red. So if I leave these two statements unprotected in my script, when I save my HTML and refresh my web page, they immediately run. So these two statements work, but they're not named. I cannot reuse them, and they are executing immediately. So instead of doing that, let's put them inside a function, and I'm going to use function declaration syntax with the function keyword, and I'm going to call this function red. After the function name, we always have parentheses when we're creating a new function. Now, if that function needs us to pass information to it in order for it to run, we put those pieces of information inside the parentheses. But this function just runs these two statements. It doesn't need any more information in order to operate. So I do not need to define the big red function with any arguments. Then the statements that I want to run in a function are always inside these curly braces. I'm going to move that closing curly brace to the end, save my web page, refresh my web page, and I'm noticing that these two statements are no longer running. So I've protected these statements from executing immediately. I've also named these two statements big red. Now to run a function, I write the function name followed by parentheses, and that will execute it. It says, go to the big red function and run whatever statements are inside the curly braces. So now if I save my HTML and refresh my web page, now the big red function is not only created, it runs. Now you might think it's pointless to go ahead and surround these two statements and protect them with a function name and then go ahead and immediately run that function name. But remember, now that we have the big red function created, we could run it as many times as we wanted. For example, if you're adding items to a shopping cart, you want to have one function that added items to a shopping cart and run that one function every time you added an item to a shopping cart. You wouldn't want to have a new function for each item. While this is a very simple example, if we ever wanted to run the big red function later in the script, we could, given we've given it a name, by merely writing big red, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, semicolon. Anytime we want to repeat a function on a web page, like adding an item to a shopping cart or increasing a score on a game, anytime we have a repetitive motion, we know we're going to need a function because we're going to want to do that activity more than once. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the big red statement here in my saved file. 
save and show you another way to test functions that you've written that you're not ready to run yet. And that is by right clicking the web page, going into the inspector, going to the console tab where you can write JavaScript statements for testing purposes. I'll save my HTML, refresh my page. Red has not run yet. If I run it here in my console, I can test my function without saving that in my actual code. This is just a temporary place to run JavaScript statements to help you as a developer. I'm going to clear the console, refresh the page, or back to whatever code has been saved in your code editor. So that's it for our first screencast in JavaScript Functions 101. Why do we use and create functions? Because we want to name the statements that we are creating, give them a descriptive name. We want to potentially be able to rerun, reuse those statements with only the name, which is much faster than copying the two or 20 or 200 statements that are inside the function. And we want to protect the statements from executing immediately. We want to run that function when the user clicks on a button or when the page loads or when a particular activity happens. And we'll cover all those topics in this series. Next up, what do functions look like? Functions can be written as function declarations, as I did with this big red function using the function keyword. This is called a function declaration. We're declaring the function. Functions can also be written as function expressions using arrow functions and as object methods. And we'll look at all of those ways to write functions next. Thank you.